Hello, Kao. Welcome to ASEAN Talks. I'm Chala Pansana Rula. In the wake of the global economic crunch, Thailand has been looking for newer export destinations and also diversifying markets. Trade dialogue has been expanded to as far as Latin America and the Caribbean. And that will not only benefit Thailand, but also Southeast Asia as well. About this economic partnership between ASEAN and Latin America, today we have Dr. Brisha Pon Suwatnodom from the Office of Thailand Trade representative joining us here to tell us more about these new investment initiatives and also the new trade channels. Swadika, Doctor. Swadika. Thank you very much for joining us today on ASEAN Talks. Thank you. To begin with, tell us a bit about your uh, your thoughts, your opinions on the econ economic partnership between ASEAN and Latin America. Oh, the economics between these two regions for ASEAN and Latin, it's become, it's growing tremendously. As you can see that the number, for example, the bilateral trade just the trade, not investment. Um, the year, the end of 2010, mm -hmm. compared to 2009, it went up almost 50%. 50% in the increase. End of the, the end of the year 2009, we have the trade volume of 7.5 billion US dollar. Um, by the end of year 2010, it grew to become 10 billion US dollar. I see. Okay. So trade has increased significantly. Yes. yes, as you can see by the number. Not only that. Um, we also um, have the center called CLAC Center, which established by um, the University of Thailand Chamber of Commerce, which would be the center who has all the information about trading, um, the tax, the tariff, or the investment opportunity between Southeast Asia and Latin American continental. I see. Yes. What has actually been the main mm. factors contributing to this huge growth in the economic partnership, oh, showing many, that it's another strong factor. region, yes. emerging market? But as you can see, um, they went to Asian economic, I mean, they went... Uh, to the global economic <clears throat> crisis? Okay. They went to global economic crisis before, but they have the, learned their lesson. They recover, you know, and now as you can see that the policy, the investment policy, the tax policy has been changed. Mm -hmm. Also in the same time, Latin America has a very good mineral resource such as copper, zinc, mm -hmm. lead, which is actually is the largest in the world. I see. Okay. So these are some of the main reasons yes. making Latin America and grow I believe the culture, the culture between ASEAN and Latin, we have very similar culture. Really? Yes. How so? For example, let's say um, if you compare between Latin continental and then USA, when the kids turn 18 or 21, they tend to go out and live by themselves. Mm -hmm. They be independent. But as you can see, for example, from Chile, Mexico, Brazil, Argentina, they tend to live close to their parents. I see. Yeah. So it's very similar to Thai culture where we believe that we should stay close to our parents and try not to, you know, go away from home. So this, uh, these are some of the uh, similarities. Yes. And if you can see, um, the outside Japanese people who live outside of Japan, number one is in Brazil. Okay, yes. so that goes to show that there are a lot of uh, the same cultural values yes, yes. that we share yes. and trade has been increasing significantly as yes. well. If you look at the economic uh, progress on, and prosperity in Latin America at the moment, do you think it has reached its peak yet or there's much more room oh, to grow? Oh, there's a lot more room to grow. Look at the first number of this year, 2011, okay? So we compare 2010 to 2009, that's the whole year. It went up 50%. Mm -hmm. Only first three months of 2011, compared to the first three months of 2010, the number went up almost 42%. So there's a lot more room to grow. Mm -hmm. Not just trade, look at investment. We have um, Jack Do from Brazil, who choose Thailand as a base for their manufacture for heavy machine. Um, one of the largest leather company, Sadesa from Argentina, mm -hmm. also based on Thailand. Look at Big Cola from Peru. Now um, the market share in Thailand for the um, soft drink almost reached 20%. I see. That's owned by Peru. And also CMEX from Mexico. Look at, there's a lot of investment coming up to our region, not just trading. Why have they selected Thailand as their production base? Oh, the depends. Place? Depends on the intensive, tax intensive location. Thailand would be a very good hub to distribute all that product to another country in ASEAN. Mm -hmm. That's why we, we, we are, we are we supposed to be, we are the hub of ASEAN, you know, we can 
distribute to uh, Cambodia, Burma, Vietnam, Malaysia, Singapore, Indonesia, you know, the, all the country in ASEAN. So the opportunities are vast. There's a lot of room to grow, like a lot you more. mentioned. A lot more, yes. So if you tell us about the benefits that Thailand is set to gain from the uh, trade, mm -hmm. the free trade agreement, okay. the policies between uh, Latin America and the Caribbean region, comparing them to uh, traditional trade partners mm -hmm. like the United States, we have Europe and also mm -hmm. Japan. Uh, these places are actually slowing down. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the advantages that uh, Thai businessmen or in fact the whole region of ASEAN okay, will be gaining. Let's look at it as a whole region. For ASEAN and US, of course, the relationship we have to keep going because that's our regular our main, our main uh, major of our import and export between Thai and USA, Thai and EU, of course. But why not explore to the new market? Mm -hmm. Latin American, we, we are, they are important. As you can see, um, one of the cover magazine, The Economist, a couple weeks ago, they say Latin America is a backbone of the earth. It's a backbone of the earth. So Latin America is a new explore region. Mm -hmm. Okay, So why not explore the new country? Okay. And in the same time, we are not the only one who go there. From my experience, I went to Brazil, Argentina, Chile, Peru, Mexico, Panama, Costa Rica. Korean is already going there. Malaysia, Indonesia, Singapore, China. So we Everybody are not Everybody is actually late. rushing yes. to Latin America. Yes. Actually, just last month, um, the government of China just finished building um, the national sport stadium and give to the government of Costa Rica. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they can see that they try to build the relationship between, you know, um, Latin American country and the ASEAN country. So the economic importance has now shifted to that region. Of it's the become world. very attractive. It's becoming attractive. Yes. And is the government actually open to uh, new very, investments? Very, very. They welcome the new investment. For example, Peru, Chile, they have a lot of mining, such as copper, um, silver, gold, lead, zinc. They're willing to have the foreign investor who go in and do concession for the mining. And this concession policy is pretty fair if you take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Now let's talk about some of the uh, common trade mm -hmm. that we currently have mm -hmm. between some of the Latin American countries, Thailand and Latin America. Okay. Tell us a bit of some of those businesses. So number one right now we export, of course, pickup truck, or the, um, automo automobile parts, auto parts. Um, what else? Um, auto parts, electronics? Auto parts, electronics part, uh, washing machine, printer, microwave. That's what we number one export to Latin American country. Mm -hmm. But we also import a lot of mineral, for example, um, copper, mm -hmm. zinc, um, frozen seafood, some agriculture business too. I see. Okay. But the thing is this. In order for us to increase the trade and enhance the investment, we need to work together as a team, as a Thailand team. For example, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Ministry of Commerce, um, BOI, the Office of Thailand Trade Representative. We work together as a team. Okay, so we separate step into like three parts. Mm -hmm. So first is I call it we call it G to G, so government to government. If we have our government, um, which you know, let's say for example, Dr. Washa Panchet, which um, the Thailand Trade Representative, um, has led many business delegates from Thailand to all the most of the country in Latin American country. If the government sector meet with the government sector, with the minister level, it make a lot easier to work on the policy. Mm -hmm. So the doors are basically open. The door open for the government on both sides. They welcome us, we go, we go them to make sure that we are very serious and we would like to do the business with you. That's G2G. Next, we call it O2O, organization to organization. That's why we also bring the president of um, Thailand Chamber of Commerce, um, the vice president of um, Fed of Thai Industry, and also we also have the Thai Latin Business Council, mm -hmm. which president which is Kun Somkiet Anurad. So O2O, we go organization to organization. So we can see that once the government opened the door, next is O2O. So we can see that, hey, this is the sector that we have in our country. What do you have? This is what we have. What would, you, what would you like us to invest in? What would you like to buy from us or sell from us as an O2O? So it's basically a step of exploring opportunities. Yes, that's as a macro, macro scale. Now next one, the most important one is B2B. That's the business to business. Now this is what the people actually be selling or buying or investing. Okay? So G2G, O2O and B2B. Mm -hmm. That's make the whole team work.
Mm. Yes. Now, as for the current major export destination, mm -hmm. that Thai uh, businessmen are exporting their uh, goods and services to Latin yes. America. Yes. Which is the most uh, popular market there at the moment? Oh, right now, number one we're trading is Brazil. Brazil. Okay. Second is um, Mexico, um, Argentina, Chile, and Peru. These are top five in Latin. But major, um, the most number one product that we export is the um, auto parts and pickup truck. Mm -hmm. That's almost over 50% of it. I see. Yes. Now, let me ask you, if Brazil mm -hmm. is actually uh, the number one country that Thailand is trading with mm -hmm. at the moment in the Latin American yes, region. 3.2 billion a year. 3.2 billion US dollars a year. Yes. But uh, we recently established a, an FDA with yes. Peru instead, instead yes. of uh, Brazil. Yes. Why Peru and not Brazil mm. in the industry? Because Peru phase? has been begin for a long time. The negotiation processing has begun since a um, couple years ago. Okay. So Peru can be one of the country that we can use as a hub. So we can use Peru as a gateway to distribute to another country in, in Latin American country. Because as you can see that with Latin American country itself, they also have the Andrian community and Mercosur. Okay? So now we have to do country by country. Mm -hmm. okay? Peru, Peru and Chile actually both are, are in the process now, but Peru is already been finished. Now we're in the process of um, selecting which category, which I believe there's 8,000 category, but um, 5,000 would be effective um, right away. But out of that 5,000, I believe 4,000 would be zero tax right away, such as pickup truck mm -hmm. from 4% to 0%. I see. The other 2,000, it's going to take another five years until it reach 0%. Oh, so trade has not been fully liberalized mm. as yet. Mm. We have to wait for a couple of more years. For, for, for you mean tariff to be reduced to 0%, the FTA between Thailand and Peru. Oh, it's all effective this year. It has been effective. Yes. But as for the number of goods and services traded between the two countries, so 4,000 category would be 4, effective right away. Since January the 1st of this year. Um, I believe it should be coming, right now, they, right now they're on the process of declaring which time would be effective starting when. I see, yeah. okay. But the so negotiation has been already done. Negotiation has been done. Yeah. The pact has been officially in effect, but as for the amount of goods and services to benefit truly, yes. that has still to be announced. Yes. So by the time the, the, the agreements or, or the tariff is, is fully liberalized, meaning mm -hmm. no, no tax, tax at all, yes. that would take a couple of years from now. Actually, it would be effective this year. No, for the total. For the total, or depends on which category you're talking about. I see. Because total is five to 8,000. But 4,000 would be effective this year mm -hmm. right away. The other 2,000 would take another five years, which may be reduced 1% per year until it reach you know, on the fifth year becomes zero percent. So that is how it works. Yes. Now, we'll take a short break now, but stay right here with us on ASEAN Talks as when we come back, we'll talk about the cooperation now uh, with, between ASEAN and also Latin America and the opportunities that remain. Welcome back. You're still with us on ASEAN Talks. And with us today is Dr. Prisha Pon Suwatano Dom from the Office of Thailand Trade Representative. We were talking about the uh, Thailand and Peru FTA, which came into effect since January of this year. Let's now talk about the industries that are set to benefit from mm. this uh, agreement. Mm. I believe as benefit for the category, I believe as a region as a whole, every product would benefit. But of course, number one is pickup truck, car, auto parts, which number one export you know, that we export from Thai to Peru. But in the same time, we also import a lot of zinc, lead, copper from Peru, okay? Next category would be electronics part, auto parts, um, computer parts, washing machine parts, radio parts, follow up, you mm -hmm. know. But um, there might be a small sector that we think it may be affected, which is fish meal. Because Thailand also produce fish meal. But Peru, they also very good in producing fish meal. I okay? see. So if FTA become effective, I believe, Maybe there would be some effect to our um, for the Thai business people who do fish meal business. I see. So um, we have um, um, a policy of helping assistant assisting the people who do the fish meal. So basically, there are some minor challenges, yes. and uh, Thailand yes. uh, business people would yes. have to sort of catch up and perhaps you know uh, make their fish meal better. Yes. 
to compete with the Peruvians. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about ASEAN. If Thailand mm -hmm. is eyeing Latin America, mm -hmm. are there other countries in the ASEAN region eyeing you know, the same market? Oh, definitely. For example, uh, we just came back from Peru. Peru is planning to build seven new freeway, okay, and they give the concession fee okay, for, the, for the other um, private sector from different countries who would like to come and bidding to, you know, um, to collect the fee for the, for the freeway, for the highway. Um, the first two concessions already been given away, mm -hmm. already, been, already been complete, okay? but the third concession is on the process now. Mm -hmm. And believe it or not, seven countries is on the process of bidding this third concession. Out of seven, three of them is from Asia. So okay. a lot of Asians are interested yes, in doing are, business there. They are there. going there. Mining in Chile, okay, Codelco. They already have the um, ASEAN office headquarters in China, which is Codelco is one of the largest mining companies in Chile. Mm -hmm. Okay, and um, um, Sadesa, as I mentioned, um, the biggest um, leather company from Argentina, CMEX Mexico. Okay, but in the same time, we have to try to push our Thai business to go out and invest outside also. That's why um, BOI create what's called TOI, Thailand Overseas Investment. We start try to support the Thai business people who has ability to go out and invest outside. For example, Indorama mm -hmm. has polymer. already po polymer plastic. Yes, already invest um has an office in Mexico. Mm -hmm. So we try to do you know both in and out. So for example, we. If we try to go there and try to sell something, it would be difficult now this day for you to go sell something. But if we want to tell them, hey, we are here to buy you things. We are here to invest in your country. What policy do you have to offer? What sector do you recommend? Please tell us. We will find a good business matching partner for you. You've been around to so many countries. Mm -hmm. Tell us a bit for investors, for business people to do business in um, countries in the Latin American region. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult comparing to when you establish offices in other ASEAN mm -hmm. regions, you know, perhaps uh, in Vietnam, in Singapore? Mm -hmm. Because out there, it's a different place. Yes. And I believe that there could be some of the barriers that speak Spanish and Portuguese, okay. for example. Okay. Is it so more difficult? To answer your question, I wouldn't say it's easy, but I also wouldn't say it's difficult. First. The difficult barrier first is the language, of course. Brazil, they speak Spanish, Portuguese, but majority of everybody in Latin, they speak Spanish, mm -hmm. okay? But for the language, as you can see from the experience that I went, um, a lot of people um, speak English. So the language is not really the, the difficult barrier that we have to overcome. But what, what more difficult is they're very far. The, the logistics, distance, the, the journey logistic very far. has to be yes. from Asia to Latin yes. America. For example, on the way back from me, that came back from Costa Rica, it took me 35 hours from Costa Rica back to Bangkok, okay, wow. all the route. But the distance, actually, if you think about it, now the trade has increased. Mm -hmm. So what caused the price of us that when we have to compare with another supplier from another country is the freight. But if, if, if you can see, if the trade increased, Usually the freight between the two regions will decrease the price. Okay? So instead of us shipping some one container, one full container there, on the way back, why not buying something in the same container and bring it back? Instead of shipping it back to an empty container. Mm -hmm. okay? So we have to do both bilateral trade. Okay? So you have to plan well yes. in order to manage the uh, cost for mm -hmm. traveling. And it's, it's not difficult because right now, um, um, Office of Thailand Trade Representative, also along with um, Thailand Chamber of Commerce, which is led by uh, Dr. Wachar Panchet and Kun Somkiet Anurad, we have the Thai Latin Business Council. Any um, SME people, any business people who would like to have a knowledge of what to do, how to begin, if they want to sell something, they want to import something, you can go to the Thai Latin Business Council or CLAC Center at the, um, the University of Thailand Chamber of Commerce. They both has a very good information for you there. I see. Uh, being with Thailand Trade Representative Office, are you happy with this deal now? And uh, what's your next step? You know, the newer markets that you're trying to tap in, opportunities that are available Actually, for every Thai market businessmen. is important. For example, why we focus on Latin. Yesterday, last, I mean, why we focus on Latin. Last year in November, we have the first Latin business forum, which organized by in Thailand. Okay, our Prime Minister Abhisit also, uh, our Prime Minister Abhisit Wechachiwa also came and do the open the ceremony. Mm -hmm. So it's a very big event. You know, we, we, we can see that Latins become one of the most attractive regions that we cannot overlook. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in the same time, 
2015 AEC ASEAN of course number one okay we look at everybody equally important but we should not overlook someone who's logistically far mm -hmm. okay we have why not why not why not increase more trade because overall benefit is become to Thai people US EU ASEAN why not Latin so there could be more bilateral agreements with yes. other countries of now? Of course, of course. Which is the next market Chile. that you're aiming? Chile. 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 Yes. Right now, the FTA between Thailand and Chile is on the process now, which probably finish by the end of this year or the latest, probably next year. So Peru is already done. Chile is on the way. And recently, there was a trip to Mexico as well. Yes. Mexico, Peru, uh, four months ago. Last month was Panama and um, Costa Rica. Costa Rica. Yes. Now, what are the uh, businesses or types of investments that they are looking for from Thailand, these countries? From Thailand? Yes. Majority is a um, uh, mineral resource like um, mining. Okay. For example, Peru, Chile, they have a lot of mining that they would like a lot of uh, foreign investors to go in and do concession with them. Mm -hmm. Okay. So they're, they're looking for a good partner also. Okay. Um, for example, energy drink, mm -hmm. soft drink. Instead of us um, try to um, bring down our cars and try to sell to USA, pass to Mexico, or sell to Mexico. Why not go there and find a good partner and invest there? Because Mexico is a very big population. They drink a lot of coconut juice, they drink a lot of soft drink, they drink a lot of energy drink. Thailand is, we are one of the best people who do the coconut drink and energy drink. Mm -hmm. So these are some of the uh, things yes. that yes. could happen in also, the near future. Also auto parts. So for example, auto parts, if you have um, an order which the quantity is not high enough, so in order to you to make one more, it would cost very high because you don't have enough um, quantity order. Is it worth it to build one more? Maybe you can find a partner who shared cost for the more and then print it out and then sell it to both ASEAN and Latin. Mm -hmm. Now, as we are eyeing them, how are they viewing ASEAN and oh, Thailand? Very important, very important. Why are they coming here? Look at it. Um, on March um, 30th, we just have a Peru Business Forum Day. They invite the Minister of Commerce from Peru to Thailand. They look at Thailand as a very important country mm -hmm. that Thailand can be a very good hub as an ASEAN in region. Okay? Look at um, Brazil, Mexico, Chile, uh, Peru, Panama. They are coming to ASEAN too. Okay, they don't just they don't just focus on just EU and USA. Mm -hmm. okay. So the, the the trade directions are shifting everywhere around the world. Yes. we are important. Global. ASEAN is important. Yes. Latin America at the same time yes. is being important. Yes. What about the uh, traditional partners like US and Europe? Are they also becoming very important. less significant now? They are also very important, and they're still very significant. That's what I'm saying before. We cannot overlook US, EU, or ASEAN. These are very good neighbor. These are very good partner of us for the long term. But why not expose to the new market? Mm -hmm. Why not increase the trade? Why not increase the investment? Okay? But because back in the old days, as you can see, Latin American, they went through crisis before. They learned their lesson. Okay? For example, every time when we have a meeting, when they ask about our political instability, they don't get excited at all. They're not surprised. They even say, oh, we've been worse. <laughs> they have their own yes, issues. Yes. Which so was it's, actually I was gonna ask you about what they think about our political situation. Oh they they, <laughs> they don't it, it doesn't it does not take them away from us. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take their eyes away from Thailand. I see. Yes. So it's a long term vision yes. that they have for mm -hmm. Thailand mm -hmm. and ASEAN. Has there been any uh, projections as to how much trade will be increasing no. you know, between ASEAN and Latin America, mm -hmm. especially with Thailand and Peru yes. now that the FTA has been okay. in effect? With all the factors include the government, the private sector working together as a team Thailand, the trade for example 2009, it's 7.5 billion mm -hmm. US dollar both, both way. 2000 it become 10 billion. Um, Thailand Chamber of Commerce, Office of Thailand Trade Representative, Ministry of um, Commerce projected that the number would go double within five years. So it should go close to 20 billion US dollar in five years. Mm -hmm. But after the FTA with Peru, after we have CELAC Center, after Latin Business Forum there, after all the business trip that we invite them to come, we also go there. I think the number can be reached maybe 
within three to four years. I see. So that is very promising, yes. I should say. Now let me ask you this other question. We have our bilateral agreements with some of the countries in Latin America mm -hmm. and the FTA is mm -hmm. actually growing gradually yes. as negotiations get underway. At the same time, other countries in the ASEAN bloc are having their own agreements also. as well. Now do you think this would actually uh, you know, make the competition much actually, tougher or does it, does it benefit the region as a whole? I think, I think it's a good news. So which means ASEAN overall become very attractive. For example, right now Singapore already finished the FTA with Chile and Peru. Mm -hmm. okay? So which means as a whole region, ASEAN become very attractive to them. And also they are very attractive to the other country in ASEAN also. By 2015, once it becomes AEC, we can work as a whole team. Will it be better if uh, ASEAN has an FTA with Latin America? Actually, that's a study. That's a study between ASEAN and Mercosur. Okay? But there's only been study. But it hasn't do any next further step if FTA can be effective. That's why we go country to country. Mm -hmm. Interesting indeed. As for the uh, current negotiations that you mentioned, we are already discussing with uh, Chile. Mm -hmm. with Mexico. How much time do you think it's going to take before the FTAs are done? Okay, from FTA, um, FTA Thailand and Peru is already effective. Mm -hmm. Thailand and Chile should be done probably the latest by the end of this year or beginning of next year. I see. Yeah. Now how committed is Thailand in providing trade facilitation to foreign investors? Oh, BOI. But our investment can be provided for example tax intensive, um, location, logistic, tax, tariff, um, um, all this benefit that BI offer to the foreign investor from Latin to our region, to our country. Mm -hmm. BI has all this policy to provide to make sure that it's benefit for both sides. I see. So basically we are committed yes. to uh, welcome more investments yes, from that region yes. and other regions yes. here in Thailand as well. Now before we end the show, let me talk a bit about the roles of Office of Thailand's trade representative in stimulating further uh, co economic cooperation, if mm. not Latin America, but other, other nations that perhaps we could uh, benefit from. Tell yes. us a bit about your roles. Okay. So um, Thailand Trade Representative, which is led by um, Kun Kiet Siti Amor, which is the President of Thailand Trade Representative, uh, Dr. Suthat Seth Bun Sang, Dr. Vasha Panchet. These three leaders, they work together as a team. Okay. Before, back in the old days, uh, TTI office divide the world into three regions. So one people take one third, one person take one third, the other person take one third. Now they work together as a matrix. Mm -hmm. We look at the sector, we also take a look at the region also. So um, India, Japan, EU, USA, Canada, Latin, they all work together as a team. Depends on the sector, depends on the location. Mm -hmm. okay. So basically, uh, everybody's working hard yes. to uh, initiate hard. more trade opportunities yes. for Thailand. And that's all the time we have. Thanks to Dr. Prisha Pon for joining us today. Sweetie Ka. Have a good day. And that was Dr. Prisha Pon Suwatanodom from the Office of Thailand Trade Representative joining us today on ASEAN Talks. And that concludes today's edition. Thanks to all of you for spending part of your day with us as well. I'm Chola Pansan Rula. See you next time. Sweetie Ka.